गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू सुपर हेल्दी सुपर मॉर्निंग विद डॉक्टर शिल्पी एंड टूडे वी गोइंग टू टॉक समथिंग रियली इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड वाई आई से इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ लेबर द चॉइस ऑफ लेबर द चॉइस ऑफ गोइंग फॉर अ नॉर्मल डिलीवरी डेफिनेटली डिपेंड्स ऑन दिस एंटिटी to an extent that uh, you know at times uh, just a moment i'll be back so to an extent that the choice uh, that we have for delivery definitely definitely depends on this entity and why do we call uh it as very important is there's so much of decision making uh that comes when it comes to this entity so we going to talk everything about amniotic fluid around the baby the fluid that is surrounded uh you know it's that that is there around the baby and its importance and its significance and how this fluid helps in natural delivery how the fluid helps in delivering uh, uh you know the process of delivery also and uh, there are certain conditions where it goes high and where, where it goes low and how the it impacts on this uh, uh you know uh, the process of labor we'll know so amniotic fluid what is amniotic fluid you know amniotic fluid it's a very important part of fetal development and that is uh, it's the liquid that surrounds the baby while they grow inside the uterus and amniotic fluid uh, you know appears as early as 12 days of pregnancy and uh, it goes on and on and on and it gives that cushioning effect it gives that lubricating effect it gives that comfort to the moving baby inside it gives us uh you know uh, a sense of well being if amniotic fluid is all good it means that the internal environment of the baby is very good other than the cushioning that it gives it it uh, acts like a shock absorber allows the baby movements to happen freely it keeps the baby body parts you know develop normally because if the fluid is very less the baby will not have place to move and if does if the baby does not have place to move there will be fixed parts and uh, there will be contractures and there will be developmental problems in the baby also in terms of uh, you know a restricted uh, development and uh, it keeps the baby uh, temperature regulated because uh, the amniotic fluid is a warm fluid that gives lot of temperature regulation to the baby in terms of protecting the baby's Uh, temperature and internal environment and uh, it is a bag like thing and it is closed at every direction so it prevents infection so there is no chance of infection entering into the uh, baby unless and until it is through a blood borne infection that comes through the blood and the placenta otherwise if it is intact the external infections do not enter it uh, just like that and uh, it gives cushion to the cord you know cord uh, gets floating in the bag along with the baby so the ba- even the, even even when the baby is about 2 kg or 3 kg or 4 kg it does not compress the umbilical cord which is very you know fragile and which is about 3 to 4 about 2 to 3 cm in width so it it gives that kind of a cushioning effect even to the cord and prevents cord Uh, compression and uh, uh, we have about sometimes 600 ml to 800 ml of uh, amniotic fluid at the time of delivery uh, for the baby to have that lubricating effect and uh, we check the amniotic fluid regularly in an ultrasound so when we do the ultrasound examination uh, even in the third month we check whether the baby is nicely floating inside the fluid in the fifth month we check one single vertical pocket whether it is at least 5 cm of vertical pocket of fluid that is present around the baby and uh, before 28 weeks 
we check only the vertical pocket one single pocket after 28 weeks of pregnancy we check all the four pockets in the uterus so we divide the uterus into four segments and we check one segment each how much centimeters of uh, amniotic fluid is there and we calculate it by adding these four things so usually uh, we expect an amniotic fluid of say about 10 to 15 Uh, which is absolutely normal sometimes you know 8 there are people who say that 8 cm to about 15 or 18 cm is normal and it all depends on the condition of pregnancy it all depends on the uh, number of weeks that we take into calculation so if the amniotic fluid you know if the amniotic fluid is low uh, there are certain conditions when there is low amniotic fluid uh it can be a leaking amniotic fluid or it can be the placenta which is not able to produce good amount of amniotic fluid or there are some birth defects uh maybe something related to the kidney uh why kidney i'm saying is amniotic fluid is a product of two different things one is from the mother side uh the blood supply that the mother gives and there is production of amniotic fluid the second side of it is when the baby swallows the amniotic fluid it passes urine inside the mother inside the bag and that is also a source of amniotic fluid so when there is some birth defects related to kidneys and all that there can be decreased amniotic fluid and in certain conditions of uh, hypertension in pregnancy which we call preeclampsia and uh, in conditions of severe diabetes uh diabetes two types we have one is the amniotic fluid which is very high the amniotic fluid which is very low in combination with bp in mother the amniotic fluid reduces and uh, you know high bp in mother and uh, obese uh, women uh, these are some few mother causes that can cause less of amniotic fluid and as the pregnancy advances it is go, it goes beyond 38 39 40 41 42 weeks amniotic fluid keeps on decreasing and there are certain medications like strong painkillers and certain other medications that when we give the amniotic fluid drops so we have to be very watchful and do not take over the counter medications because it can have effect on the amniotic fluid and uh, why do we have increased levels of amniotic fluid there are certain conditions there also and uh, like severe diabetes uh, like uh, if there is a gastrointestinal atresia of the baby these conditions uh, uh, you know if the sugars are very high uh, these certain small small conditions where we have high amniotic fluid also for certain amount of people there is no reason why there is high amniotic fluid so that uh, there can be no reason or you know it can be diabetes or it can be any other genetic problem or it can be any other infection kind of a thing where you can see high levels of amniotic fluid also and why we are talking about amniotic fluid is amniotic fluid is the lubricant around the baby that is there which helps in labor and delivery and we have to have a good amount of amniotic fluid for even the delivery to happen as we plan and especially in natural birthing when there are no other external forces or uh, you know uh, in normal delivery where we are trying to figure out to take get the baby as natural as possible so the baby also should be in an, in an environment which is very friendly to the baby very cushiony to the baby and the amniotic membrane bag itself goods puts good amount of pressure uh, in dilatation of the Uh, uterus so that the delivery happens and whenever there is less amniotic fluid see she is uh, you know the pregnant woman is coming near to delivery and uh, we see that there is less amniotic fluid we ask them to you know drink lot of liquids uh, we have procedures that we we can do an increase amniotic fluid like amnio infusion and they at times we give iv fluids also and if we find a cause for it we even uh, you know uh, try to rectify the cause and we give her rest we do a little bit of extra monitoring in terms of monitoring the heartbeat of the baby we give her nutritious food so that uh, the uh, the amniotic fluid if it is 
nutritional or stress related or dehydration we try to correct it and uh, we give her some natural remedies and some certain uh, pressure points that we have that you know increase the amniotic fluid and if still uh, we feel that the amniotic fluid is coming down slowly then we try to deliver her by at least inducing her to give her a give her a good chance of normal delivery so this uh, amniotic fluid is one of the reason not the only reason one of the reason why we eventually plan delivery or the body itself you know the body itself has a very good protective mechanism of figuring out uh, there is something going on wrong and the cervix starts to dilate and we have to recognize this part and take her for an induction of labor and deliver her and uh, uh, there are several several questions that people ask that uh, doctor i have uh, less amniotic fluid they have posted me for a cesarean what i should do amniotic fluid is only one of the reason for uh, you know taking that decision there are several other factors there, there are so there were so many people you know in the last few months and years that they have come to me when their doctor has told that uh, they are going to plan for a cesarean the next day because of less amniotic fluid i took up the case as a challenge we managed uh, that time frame that uh, she that she had and then we tried to uh, we tried to figure out certain home remedies certain uh, things with acupressure certain things with counseling certain things with partner support certain exercises for that very short duration and we tried to get her into labor so with such there are enormous techniques to do that and when we apply those techniques even with less amniotic fluid i have delivered women with 2 afi and 3 afi imagine 2 afi and 3 afi are very very low levels of amniotic fluid but in such cases also if we can keep the bag intact you know uh, not uh, artificially rupturing the bag and keeping the bag intact we can deliver the mother uh, and safely the child in such a way that uh the delivery is also done it is normally done and the baby is protected within the sac and the sac uh you know whatever the minimal amount of fluid that is there is helping the baby keep a normal heartbeat and there is no compression anywhere in you know critical cases uh, where there is absolutely no uh, fluid we even do amnio infusion that is artificially infusing the amniotic fluid body friendly fluids we have body friendly fluids we try to in, uh, infuse body friendly fluid keep a little lubricating effect around the baby and try to deliver the baby so in such things there is so much uh, you know the, there is a need of lot of positivity in the mother it should be her determination and the partner support and they should have a a a, a wish and confirmed affirmation that they want a normal delivery rather than getting scared or saying it it will it work will it work will it work that question itself will not work so you should be able to be confident and say that i want to give a try i will succeed i am going to go for natural birthing my baby will come by a natural normal delivery i will have to support the baby coming out by natural methods and my ba- my body is going to support my doctor is going to give me that kind of an environment and i will do my best so these kind of affirmations if you take anything that you determine will definitely definitely work and there is nothing beyond determination and beyond putting an effort even before putting an effort there are people who succumb to uh, you know um, uh, a very trivial things like uh, you know they become very sensitive about the baby whenever they say that there is a risk to the baby a risk of cord compression or a risk of head compression or a risk of having breathing difficulties or heartbeat variations in the baby they they succumb to that sentiment and they go for uh, cesareans and they go for uh, other forms of delivery but you know nature by itself has so many correcting mechanisms nature by itself promotes uh, natural birthing and normal deliveries in way more mechanisms than doing a cesarean so 
if there is a serious uh, you know uh, if we have to talk if there is a serious a uh, problem to the baby in terms of heartbeat coming down or the baby whenever there's a contraction there's a heartbeat coming down or there's a cord around the neck uh, also along with very less liker and the heartbeat is coming down when the contractions are coming that is when uh, and there is no dilatation of absolutely what has happened then that is the time then we who should contemplate of having an alternative form of delivery there are times when everything is fully dilated and uh, you know uh, we can see the head of the baby and uh, at times when the heartbeat is down that time also there are people who who shift for emergency deliveries but you know if the mother is determined if the mother you know uh, uh, muscular strength is trained well all throughout pregnancy you practice yoga you practice uh you know uh, st- body strengthening exercises there is good amount of partner support there is good amount family support your strength is developed and uh, you do regular yoga and squats and pelvic floor exercises and back strengthening exercises and breathing exercises and breathing techniques you will definitely be prepared and all that you require is that relaxation the mental blockage and thought blockage is something that uh we cannot treat with medications and that is one thing that is causing lots of lots of issues these days baby safety is priority for everybody but if the mother starts uh, thinking about baby safety which is not in her hands you know baby safety is always in the doctor's hands and when the doctor is adequately monitoring and the doctor is adequately taking care you should not have the fear of the baby you should not have the fear of the process you should not have the fear of the outcomes that is medically monitored and there is these days in institutional deliveries there are people to take care of all these things and all that you, what is required by you is definitely to take care of your uh, ability to think positive uh, thought process negotiation and also always always think in the right direction which is going to benefit you and the person who is trying to deliver you rather than thinking negative in this situations even partners have to be very well supportive family also has to be very well supportive unwanted uh, information from other sources like uh, you know my, my aunt has told or my my friend has told that if le- maniotic fluid is less there will be a cesarean so that itself is getting the negativity into your body so do not listen to any kind of a here say your body responds or your body outcomes in terms of amniotic fluid fluctuations they literally uh, i can say that to an extent unless and until you are in labor and what is happening in labor they do not impact labor and delivery there are so many situations that i have seen that people have uh, given reports of two or three or four afis and i have de- delivered them normally intact with the sac and there are mechanisms to do that so from today onwards never ever think about a negative report there's always a scope for turning it around into the positive thing yes in special situations like you know preterm baby low birth weight baby and uh, absolutely dry baby uh, and uh, you know infections or fever or uh, any other special situations trial and error methods do not work then comes the baby safety first other than that if it's a term baby good weight baby likelihood of progressing of labor is there obviously you should try for a natural birthing and normal birthing and you should not get influenced by other people's thoughts and uh, never ever get into the negative influence it is always about thinking positive it is always about trying for a natural birthing experience that is what will make a lot of difference in the outcomes of the mother and child and uh, when you deliver through a vaginal delivery the flora inside the baby the bacterial flora inside the baby the immunity of the baby the long term impact on the respiratory problems the long term impact on the overall well being of the baby is tremendous and uh, you know the first flora and fauna of the baby into the baby is through the uh, maternal vaginal uh, exposure so you cannot deprive the baby 
in any given situation by an abdominal delivery if a vaginal delivery is definitely possible and safely possible so that is one thing that you have to very consciously take a decision so it's all about natural birthing normal birthing and it's all about preventing certain causes of uh, you know uh, prevention of cesarean deliveries and to contribute to normal delivery and natural birthing so this is all about amniotic fluid and amniotic fluids do impact delivery outcomes but not always there are n number of ways to increase amniotic fluids including being lot of stress relief lot of clarity good amount of rest no apprehensions positive attitude nice hydration good nutritious diet a stress free environment a baby friendly environment and go to go through a normal vaginal delivery whatever matters will matter definitely you should give it a try so this is all about um, amniotic fluid today and uh, we will have yet another interesting to- topic tomorrow morning see you in super healthy super mornings with dr shilpi thank you all for joining and uh, we will take questions also so any amount of questions whatever question you want we can take questions and to promote natural birthing and uh, normal delivery it is not only about pregnant women who can listen to these topics it's general information because there are people around you who are delivering there are people around you who want uh, good advice anybody can watch anybody can listen anybody can have the information because it's about next generation it's about life coming up it's about your friends or your sister or your uh, you know uh, relatives who are going to deliver and your input into their life the right input will give them the right output so thank you so much see you tomorrow morning yet again with another interesting topic